Welcome back, everybody. This is M Dog from M Dog Gaming, and we are making a Russian Fishing 4 video. It has been too long. I'm really wanting to start making some videos again for this game. Um, just an update on the channel. As far as YouTube, I've been trying to uh, bring in a little bit of Mountain Blade Bannerlord 2 content. Streamed that for several hours last night and was able to upload some of that to YouTube. Um, also, recently, Played a little bit of WoW, just kind of playing some different MMOs, but definitely wanting to um, get back into RF4. Sorry, let me uh, take my picture off at least for a minute here so you can see. This is my new sort of focus, I think, for videos, at least for now. In the past, I've done those long leveling video series that I have definitely enjoyed putting together, and I may do one of those again in the future. In fact, I would say there's a pretty good chance I will. It is a little bit of a process though, starting a new account and then deciding like, where are we going to leave off and, and where do we stop? And sometimes I think, you know, I should just be doing all of my fishing on my main account. So for now, that's what we're gonna do. For now, we're gonna focus on main account. So even though we are here at the, the newest uh, body of water, the Donuts River, which sort of falls in between Volkov and Sura in terms of the map listing. I think it's pretty close to the same level as Volkov, if I remember correctly. But this one's going to be more of the place where there's some decent spinning fishing here, from what I understand. But this is an especially sort of like a mid-level place to level float fishing, which I think is pretty cool. It's like my least favorite uh, part of... Uh, Russian fishing for but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy it I just have spent the least amount of time so I'm the least comfortable with it especially with like the the bolo rods and bolo style fishing which I feel like is probably what we want to do here to fully appreciate this place so I thought let's start here we'll learn together a little bit I mean I, I've put a little bit of thinking into this on like what baits and hook sizes and stuff. I've looked at the record list a little bit, but I really don't know what we're gonna catch, if anything. First of all, we're starting off and it's gonna be night for the first portion of this video. Um, it is a pretty river. It's just the style of fishing doesn't necessarily fit what I normally do. So let's just get some things out here and we'll start seeing how they do and then adjusting from there. Um, but I think my idea here is that maybe instead of doing a leveling series maybe i'll just focus on different bodies of water with my main account and, and included in that could be low level lo low level spots and i'll try to remember when i'm doing that to show you what you might use at at, at your level based on like what equipment is available to you i don't know if that makes sense but that's kind of what i'm thinking now okay so for this one we've got we're going to start off about 75 centimeters for all this this is actually on a bolo rod so we'll cast out a little farther so it gets out there a little bit. And that one's got worms on it. This one has maggots. I'll, I'll try to remember as we get going. I'm gonna start off with 75 on all of them. You don't have to, I don't have to cast that quite as hard because it's, it's actually a match rod. And then this third one is also a match rod. I can already tell this one's at one meter. Let's go down to 75. Let's start off at the same depth so we can do some comparing here. And this has got bark beetle larva. And uh, let's just put them all down. We'll see if anything bites while we're sitting here talking about it. And, and I'll show you some of the stuff. So, so this on this river, obviously the current's moving. So, so we're, we're really fishing with the current here. Whoa, I think that was the second rod that just, okay. And I missed it. There'll be a lot of that. Just, you know, be ready for it. I have a pretty low um, rating on my float fishing. What is it in fact? It's only 60.3, no points really in any of the different types of fishing um so it's pretty low but we'll just see what we can do here one thing i do want to try from looking at the list it looks like things like stonefly larva and maybe even mayfly larva might also work here so we might rotate those in especially for the bark beetle larva but you got, you got to assume that things like worms and maggots are just going to always be good here. All right, so that's our first rod. And then our second one's the one that's farther out. And then the third one is this one here. 
Obviously, that first one from the way the bobber was sinking, I think we need a little uh, stronger bobber, heavier bobber, because it was like floating down so low. Okay, let's see if we get any bites here. I guess I can show you the uh, equipment really quick since we're not getting bites currently. So this is the match rod I'm using. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to switch all of these to much smaller leaders. I think that might help our bite rate a little bit because these are pretty small fish we're going to be catching here for the most part. I've got size 16 hooks. I can give you a quick glance of this one too. I've got sabers on the two match rods, but we're going to be using much smaller leaders. So the sabers are really overpowered for what we would even need here. I'm using a fishing pride on the bolo rod. But again, I think we can do a lot smaller leader. So we'll let's switch those out. Let's see if that makes a difference. Again, I'm not sure how much activity we're going to get. Was that? Nah. Here at, at night. Um, oh, I don't have. Oh, wait. Yeah, I should. I should. Fluorocarbon, yeah, 3.1. That's what we want. I think 3.1 might be a little more interesting. Wow. Did that already go under? It did. Now, immediately, we got, a, we got a strike there. Did the leader really make that? It looks like a chub, doesn't it? Yeah. We did get a point in float fishing, so that's good. That's what we want, isn't it? Get those points. I think number two is getting a bite, too. So that, that leader difference might have made a difference. We'll see. It could have also just been a coincidence for sure. Uh, what's going on? Is it? Yeah. Nope. Jerked it right out of its mouth. Nothing like getting to watch me struggle with float fishing for a video. Oh, that went way farther than I intended. I forgot this is a match rod. We don't have to cast it very far at all. And is this third one? All right, so we'll, we need to still need to switch the leader size on the third one as well. But I think we might get a little better results with the smaller leader. Once the second rod gets settled, we'll go ahead and switch the third one out too. And, and we can also switch spots on the river, but I'm, I'm guessing that using these like pretty common baits that you probably can do this just about anywhere on the main river and get similar results. Some spots may be a little better than others, but all right, let's switch this out and we'll probably play with this third rod a good bit because this is the one that I think I'm going to try different baits on. We'll stay pretty consistent with the, uh, the worms and the maggots for now, but, oh, did that? No, maybe not. But uh, I, I wanna try out some of the other larva and stuff on this third one. Bark beetle may do okay, I don't know, but let's see. We've got 16 hooks on all three, so we can play with the hook size, but I feel like 16 is probably pretty good. It's versatile. Um, you know, the, the different fish species that we're trying to target here are all under what a kilo or so some of them may go a little more than a kilo or, or maybe a couple kilos if you catch a big one but most of the fish we're going to be pulling out are going to be relatively small The only points affecting this really is the spinning reel. Other than that, we're just fishing without any skill points in, in float fishing, but that's okay. I think the only times I've really wanted to have my float fishing a little higher in RF4 has been when um, there's been times when like with carp fishing, some of the sandwich bait styles have been um have been working pretty well oh wow did you see how far that fish took it we still didn't get it i gotta be a little quicker than that i think if we had picked it up a little faster we would have hooked it sometimes they just get off though with float fishing
what would be cool is if I had just like a completely different color uh, Bolognese ro uh, float on either my second or my third one because those look way too similar. The first one looks different, but the second and third lines have pretty similar floats on there. Hope everyone is doing okay with all of the self-isolating and hope everyone's being very careful with being out in public right now as we try to wait this COVID thing out. I guess the the third one has that straight hot pink top and the second one's more of an orange top but you kind of especially at night feel like you have to get pretty close to looking at them to tell that definitely getting a bite on the bark beetle larva though hopefully the bite uh the bite rate the frequency will change a little bit um during the daytime while it is still nighttime, let's try like stonefly larva. See if uh, see if anything wants that at night. So we're getting some nibbles. I'm just missing the missing the fish. Maybe I need to like that one we just missed on the bark beetle larva. I feel like maybe I picked it up too quick. I need to make sure the fish is really on it. And we could also play with the depth. I mean, if you look to where we're casting, it's probably close to three meters deep out in front of us right there. So we might could do like maybe a meter and a half depth and see if see what that does to the bite rate. We could even try to sit it right close to the bottom. I don't know. But again, some of this might be nighttime. Yeah, I think we'll be able to tell more once it gets to be 5, 6 a.m. I wouldn't mind having them a little farther away from the, from the pier as well. So we are at 80, 165. We're really just fishing off this boat ramp. Just wanted something that would get me a little farther out without having to cast as far so that I could see the floats a little better, especially at night. Okay, let's let's try something. I mean, we're just sitting here with really slow bite rate. So let's go, let's go to depth. Uh, let's try 150. And for this one, we'll cast it. Let's do a 90% cast. It's gonna get a little farther away. Let's see if it's uh, if it's actually gonna. Yeah, I don't think it's sitting on the bottom. I think it's a good a good depth for us. Now it's farther away, and all we can see is the top of that thing sticking out. So that will be uh, interesting. We'll see what happens there. We'll start switching the second and third one too. I mean, I think we might as well just try to keep them all at about the same depth and see. If, if different depths feel better than others. Once that first one gets settled, we'll, we'll switch it. A lot of times if you're in a really good spot and you've got your bait and hook size and everything dialed in, you'll get bites before, before it gets to the end. You know, I mean, it, a lot of times while it's, while it's still floating down the river is when the fish will strike. Uh, I think we got one. What did we catch? Oh, it's a nice rough. A nice rough. And that was on worms. So probably a good reason to have worms out there. So we got a little, little deeper, a little deeper cast and caught a nice little rough there. Okay, so this one, let's switch to 1.5 as well. And um, 
We'll give it a little bit more of a heave. I probably ought to go ahead and adjust the third one as well so that they're closer to the same spot in terms of where my eyes are looking to watch for bites. That one's not going as far, but I think that's far enough. So it's our second line. I wonder if our second line has a heavier, so that's got 1.5 gram float on there. And this one has 1.8. So actually the third one is, is heavier. Okay, I'm getting confused. All right, that's line one. That's line two and that's line three, okay. So line two is the one that's got a bite on it. I guess this is where you could clip your lines and then, then they would always go to the same. Same distance, just full cast them. Ooh, number one's getting a good bite, but I think it's not on there yet, so we just wait. Now I think it's on there and I'm wrong. All right. Okay. We can kind of watch them all from here. Maybe the next thing to try, well, we're gonna have morning here in a minute. So that'll, I guess the next thing we'll try is if, if the morning bite picks up, but after that we could change the depth even a little, a little deeper possibly. Maybe try two meters, see if they're still floating properly. All right, number two has got a really good bite on there. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, what's my friction brake on? Holy cow, guys. Almost snapped it for you there. Yeah, it's a decent fish, I would say. Is that a chub? Let's see what this is. Yeah, it's a chub. Man, okay. Getting a bite on line one as well. Yeah, but that was way out there, wasn't it? All right, line one seems to have a fish on it. Or maybe it did have a fish on it. All right, this is the one that's hard to get as far out. All right, that's pretty good. And that was absolutely full cast. Oh. All right, we'll wait. I'm thinking we recast line three here. Starting to get a little more activity now that it's daytime, maybe. All right, line one, that's line two, and line three is bringing up the rear. It looks like line two might get the next bite here, which is the one with maggots on it. We caught the chub on. That was an exciting chub, though. Line two still getting a nibble. What bait do we have on line three? Yeah, we did switch to stonefly larva. That was what I was hopeful. I was hopeful based on the records that we might see some good action on that. It is hard to tell the difference in line one and two right now. I'm sorry, one and three. 
because that is two that it's out there. Three is that one, and one is the one to the right there. Okay. Line two is still, I think line two is about to go off here. You know, you would think with the worms, especially, I would just think that the bites would be pretty frequent, but they haven't been so far. It's almost 6 a.m. though. Warm up a little bit. So I'm moving line one to two meters. Full cast it. Let's see if it settles right. Uh, it may be sitting on the bottom. No, it may actually, I think it's fine. I think it was just falling. Whoa, okay. I think we got a little fish. No, we didn't. Two is still kind of trying to do something over there. Yeah, I think that was okay. It just took a while to settle um, at the two meters. I think it's still falling, 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 and now it's down. So yeah, I think we're good on that. All right, so let's try moving everything to two meters for a bit. That one casts so much farther than the other two. I don't see the float on two. Did we have a fish on there? No. Nope. I couldn't find it, so I didn't know. All right, there it is. One looks okay. Two is just underwater again, right? I think it's just hard for me to see it that far away, maybe. All right, there's three. There's two. Okay, two is getting a lot of action. There we go. We actually caught him that time. Oh, a black sea. Okay, that's cool. And I can tell that, uh, yeah, three keeps going under. So one thing I'm noticing is it seems like we are getting a lot more activity as it's floating down the river. And maybe maybe that's something worth doing is is not just letting them all sit there at the end, but actually letting them float. I think it's difficult, at least for me, it's difficult for me to keep an eye on all three of them that way, though.
I might actually be better off just fishing with two rods this way. Maybe do a third rod with, uh, with bottom fishing. I know bottom fishing isn't great here, but you could probably catch some things. really can't stand these bolo rods. The match rods I don't mind as much, but the bolo rods kind of drive me crazy. But I think if it's going to get a bite, it's more likely to happen while it's floating. Just from the little bit that I've noticed here while we've been doing this. Not that it won't ever get a bite sitting there like that. It obviously gets nibbles and stuff down there. But the most aggressive bites we've had have been while it's been floating down the river. Maybe try to get at least one of these nibbles to come through and then we'll maybe recast all three of them. Do some floating down. And maybe we should try something other than the stonefly larva. That hasn't so far worked out for us too much. Maybe by noon or so we'll go just try another random spot, see if the results seem similar. You want to increase your bite rate i guess the other things we could try is things like a little smaller hook maybe 18. shouldn't really be necessary though with the bait we're using 16 should be good try different baits try different spots So let's just say we want to go 16 meters out. We'll see what that looks like. I don't think we even hit 16 on that. All right, we had a fish on there. Is that what you're saying? Good grief. All right, so let's say we wanted to go, let's see what 16, eh, let's go 15 on this one. All right, we're going to clip it at 15 meters, full cast, see how far it goes. Wow. Is that 15 meters? So we want to go more like 10 meters, by the way.
see what 10 meters looks like. Oh, I saw something. Uh, wrong one. Uh, fish is off of it by now. All right, so. All right, let's try to do different here. Let's do. Let's do eight. Eight, eight meters on this one. Again, not even sure we made it eight. Uh, we'll do nine on this one. We'll easily make nine on this one, right? And then 10 on this one. Let's see if we can actually get it to look like it's full casting. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's been I've I've been away from the game too long. I don't remember how how long ten meters is. All right, let's see if the, any of these catch anything. I guess we need to back them all up a little bit. Go six, seven, eight, maybe. All right, I think that has a fish on it, right? Uh, maybe not. Yeah, there we go. Something. A Pontic Shad. And that was on the stone fly, so that is kind of... All right, we'll do eight. No, this is the third one. Yeah, we'll do eight on the third one, I guess. Let's see if we can. I think that did hit the clip, actually. All right, we'll do seven on this one. Just definitely not like float, uh, like like feeder or bottom fishing, is it? I think I am most surprised at how slow the worms have been. All right, so we're gonna put red worm on this one.
Now that it's daytime, we could try also going back to a much shallower depth. I think that could be an interesting experiment. Let's go back to like 0.8 meters. Just to see. Is there a fish on over there? Guess not. There we go. Wow, that was easier, wasn't it? Actually holding it. That looks like a nice, oh, I was going to say roach, but. It's Tehran. I think it's the same species as roach, so, or similar species, right? It's got to be. I kind of liked holding it like that, though. I was able to time the bite so much better. Um, let's... I'm pretty sure the only one we haven't switched depth is this first one that now has red worms on it. All right, where are our floats? There's that one, that one, neither one are doing anything too dramatic. Okay. So we'll try to hold one now. I don't see it. I'm gonna just throw it out here so I can more easily see the other two at the same time. It's hard for my eyes to see them um, if I'm not zoomed in at least once. I lose track of them very easily. All right, there we go. So again, this is the shallower depth. Line two and three are getting some nibbles, it looks like. You know, line two, it might just be such a small fish that it's not able to pull it down. I don't know. So by doing it this way, the one that we're holding, we're able to keep it floating with the current much longer. If that makes sense. We're gonna have a bit of a problem though if one of the other two goes under. We'll have to just reel, whoa. We'll just have to reel this one in real quick, I guess. Okay, I think that's line two, right? Yeah, it's like, maybe I shouldn't be, let's see. What is it that you do? Is it, I think it's for float fishing, right? If you hold control, no, that's not right. I can't remember what it was. I thought there was... I guess it is. Control right click does do something a little different than just right click. And I think it's primarily for float fishing, right? Maybe it's supposed to set the hook. I mean, if we had the slack out of this and we hit control right click, it's either gonna set the hook or f pull the float right out of the water. Maybe that is what I'm thinking of. I've always found it so um, 
I don't know if stressful is the word, but just difficult trying to float fish on three different rods at the same time. All right, so let's try a different spot. Just before we wrap this video up, before it gets to be nighttime again, uh, where do we want to try? Let's walk to the right here and just see if there are any spots that look particularly inviting to the naked eye. Do we have to go up and around or can we run? I think we have to go up and around. Okay. Is there a path over here? Nope. The other thing that's worth trying here, and I haven't done this at all, but like ultra light setups for spin fishing could be really good. Here's a little spot. This might be nice. Uh, ultra light setups could be really good. Um, and then if I fish here again, I probably would do at least one line using uh, bottom fishing. I just think two is enough for me with float fishing. All right, let's just hold this one. So we've got the maggots and the red worms in the water. This is a shallower area, more shallow area. So we'll keep it at 0.8 meter depth. lot happening I think I have a yeah this one okay This might be a little more fun. Again, I think to me, the ideal thing would be to have either one or two float fishing rods out and then perhaps a bottom fishing. Um, but you could also try doing a little spinning and just be patient with the Be patient with the float. All right, let's see here. Yeah, we're definitely getting some action on that first one with the red worm. Got a little small spoon here. Probably be better to go with a spinner bait, to be honest, but 
Well, that messed up. to really work on my float fishing really gonna have to practice that because I am missing a lot of bites all right let's see do we have anything it's like a little spinner bait that we could I don't know. Just try out here for a minute before we before we wrap this one up. Usually with the spinner bait, it's just a constant reel in at a semi slow speed. Nice little eyed. You notice it was right as we stopped, or we stopped it and then kind of started going again, and it that's when it struck. more cast and uh, then we'll wrap it up kind of want to go up to where we were fishing before in some of the deeper parts up here so this is the boat launch area and we were fishing off of this dock here and um, yeah, let's just cast it out there and See if we can get anything interested. Sixteen to eighteen real speeds kinda if my memory serves me like from winding and stuff with little spinner baits and such I would think there's a lot of ultralight fishing happening here so the other thing that might be worth doing is going to records Go to ultralight and just see wow that's a big pike so it looks like a lot of folks are using these um nasty worms is considered a wacky worm I 
know I said I was going to wrap it up. Let me just try this, though. I guess... I guess that works. See, people might be using much... Much smaller... Um, What's the restriction? So the wacky uses a different kind of different kind of hook perhaps. I'll have to look into that. I'm not actually I'm not sure about all this. I also don't know about Don't have any idea on how to retrieve these. That is really make, causing it to sink, isn't it? Oh, there we go. Maybe that's what you do. I mean, it looks like... It looks like that it is just sort of naturally... You know, bringing it up and then sinking pretty rapidly due to the weight of the hook, I guess, and the worm. So maybe that's how you make that wacky worm dance. Okay. Hey, as always, thanks for watching. I tell you, if I'm going to fish in this body of water, I've got a lot of learning to do. But I figured this would be fun just to come out and see if we could start that learning process together. And it's always great to have you here. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any comments. You've probably fished here a lot more than I have. You might have some instructions, some advice to give. That's fine, too. Um, next video i don't know we may be here again if if i get some feedback and or want to try some different things or we could just go to some of the other spots and and see uh see how the rest of the the water bodies are looking these days in rf4 but i really appreciate you being here and i will catch you next time thanks again